Hey everyone, welcome to my second tutorial on Python functions. We will continue our discussion on functions in this video by sending lists and dictionaries as arguments to them. This is really not that different than what we've been doing, but the fact that lists and dictionaries are mutable objects in Python, some interesting things can happen. So we just want to make sure that we understand these nuances. I've created two lists here, one with a list of five usernames and one empty list for validated users. The idea here is that we're going to simulate an online system or a web server that takes in a list of names and validates them against some criteria before allowing them access to the site. We're not actually going to validate the users, but we'll simulate the validation process by copying the users after they've been validated to a list called validated users. Our function will be called validate and it will accept two parameters. One is the list of username requests and one empty list to store the new newly validated users. The function takes both of these lists and then we have a while loop that runs as long as there are items in the username list. For each item in the username list, the routine removes the last item with the pop statement. The pop statement also saves the item just removed into a variable called vuser. It keeps removing the last item in the list until we reach the end of the list. Then as part of our phony validation process, we'll print out that the username has been validated and then we'll add the user to the list of validated users. And that's basically the, the purpose of the function. We call the function down here and we send two lists mentioned earlier as arguments. When we run this, we get our list of users showing that they have been validated. These users now should be moved out of the username list and into the validated username list. We can show the results from the function and show that it works here by printing out the validated users and the username list. The empty brackets here mean that there are no entries left in the username list and that they have all been copied here to the validated user list. A key point to know here is that my original list up here has now been changed. The list is empty and the original list, the original empty list that we sent to the function has been populated. So we've reversed it. So I think this is worth a little illustration to drive this point home. But when you create a list or define a list in Python, you essentially do two things. You create a reference or a pointer to a, a list object and you create the list object, which is in the brackets, the square brackets. The list object resides on the heap, on the stack, and this is where all the objects in Python are, are stored. So this can be the physical location of the list, even though that's not entirely true. Um, the list object often references the real values. But for our purposes, our illustration, this is the location in memory of our list that has the values and the my list name points to this location. So when we define a new function and we'll put a parameter new list, and this new list will also be an alias to a list to the same list that we created. So new list are pop, so the purpose of this function is to remove the last item from new list and then print out new list after removing it. And we'll call this function down here and we'll give it the argument of my list. So what happens when we run this program is that my list up on top, the original list, a copy of the name of the pointer will be sent to the function parameter and create a new pointer. This is the same as typing new list equal to my list. So now we have one list object with two pointers referencing it, two references. So when the function runs through its little routine here, the output from the function from new list will be one, two, three, minus the four, which has been removed. And that'll also be removed from the list object in the heap. So it'll also be one, two, three. So further, if we print out my list, the original list, we'll get the same result, one, two, three, meaning that the original list has been modified by the function. 
So we have two aliases or two references to one list object. The new list will be removed after the function executes. That's created while the function is running. And then you'll be left with my list. So this is how it works when you send a list or a dictionary or any mutable object in Python to a function. As we saw in our illustration, when you send a list to a function in Python, it only sends a reference to the list. A reference is like an alias or a pointer. It's not the list itself. Therefore, when we modify the list in our function, we actually modify the original list. We do not make a copy. That's a key point has been drummed home in this video. So there are ways to actually send a copy of a list, but I'm not really sure that that makes this less complicated. It's probably not the recommended way for beginners unless you really need to preserve that original list. The same rule for lists applies to dictionaries. We have a dictionary here, our spam eggs and ham dictionary that we used earlier. We'll print it out before sending it to the function. The function is written to remove spam from the list if it exists. This routine is executed inside the function. After the function runs, we'll print the breakfast dictionary to show the difference from the original dictionary. So when we run this, you can see that the dictionary has all the items listed before it goes to the function. Now the function searches the dictionary for spam and it finds it and deletes it. Now, if we print the dictionary after the function, we see that spam has been removed. So it's a very similar exercise than with what we did with lists in our illustration. So dictionaries and lists are the same, and they both are a little tricky because they are mutable objects in Python, meaning they can't be changed. They can be changed. Sorry. Strings, for example, everything is an object in Python, so strings are objects as well. But strings are immutable, meaning they can't be changed. So when you send a string to a function, more, more often than not, the expected results happen because you're not changing the contents of the string. I think this concludes our lessons on functions. We've covered the basics, and you should be able to use them in your code with what you've learned. Next lesson, we're going to look at modules. And personally, I think modules is where the main jump of programming in Python comes because they allow you to use other people's code. And at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do is leverage other people's code to write games and business applications. We can't possibly do this all ourselves. So modules is a key way to do it. And it's the only way um, to do all of this together. If you want to code for this video, you could go to my GitHub page at the link below. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks so much. See you soon.